the presentation proclamations. Presentation, 2016 annual training schedule, economic impact and environmental briefing. Colonel St. Sauber. Good evening, good evening uh, City Council members, Council President, and Mr. Mayor. Uh, love coming in every year and updating you on what's going on at Camp Ripley. Interestingly enough, I'm going to talk a little bit about trains. <laughs> so, 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 we're so, subject. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I understand that. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, mission hasn't changed. I'll, I'll go over a number of units that are getting ready to deploy right now. Uh, so, uh, we'll be training them, and we are currently training at, uh, at camp. Remember, always at Camp Ripley, it's three missions for us. Our federal mission is obviously my primary mission, and that's to make sure that the uh, soldier and airmen of the Minnesota Guard and associated units uh, receive the training they need to, to do our federal missions. Uh, the secondary mission of mine is a state mission, and that's protecting the, protecting the property and citizenry of the state of Minnesota at the call of the governor. Uh, and that's why you've seen so much state infrastructure involvement at Camp Ripley. And then the third is obviously the community relations. And as I talked to a few of you just prior to the meeting, obviously you heard us at Camp Ripley this weekend as we start our spring season. And uh, we created a little bit of that clear sky thunder this weekend uh, as the artillery heads back to the field and our heavy units start back with their training cycle. Next slide, please. <coughs> our economic impact is sitting pretty well. A couple numbers that I'll point out to you that are pretty important to me and that I use as kind of an indicator uh, of how we're doing uh, really tends around local contracts in Portland with me. I like this number to be about three million. It's the only number right now that's just lagging a little bit. I think it'll be up over three million this year. And that's actually local contracts we're doing in the community areas with business. That's businesses bringing <coughs> out and supplying, uh, supplying us at Camp Ripley. And um, that's a number that I like to watch and like to keep that around that $3 million mark. Another one that's important, obviously, is food. Uh, a lot of food is locally contracted. A lot of food comes in and out, and believe it or not, our soldiers eat a lot of food. Um, I, I know if you, uh, I, I probably briefed you before, but the, uh, a couple years ago, we had the largest single day of sales in Domino's Pizza in the United States. So it suggests we also eat a lot of pizza, it appears. So, and it comes from almost anywhere. But again, all, all those are indicators how we're doing. This one right here, I'll talk about later, Army Compatible Use Buffer. You're all aware of ACA. Uh, did very, very well. In a resource-constrained federal environment, we still were able to garner almost $3 million of federal money and another million dollars of state money uh, to execute those conservation easements that we're working on around the installation. So very, very uh, successful year. And we've already received a million and a half this year. So uh, in, in, a, in our accounts already to execute those conservation easements with willing landowners. So. Uh, feel very good about our economic impact this year. Next slide. May is going to be a pretty, you'll see this around Camp Ripley, it's not going to be like last summer. We were, we were very, very busy last summer, and I think you all saw that in the community area, but this year it'll be more of a, of a flat curve throughout the entire year. Um, but what I'd like to talk about quickly is May. You'll see that military number is up around 9,000, and that's because we have a couple of large operations going on. Our first brigade combat team, which is almost 5,000 soldiers, will be uh, deploying uh, for their, their uh, deployment readiness exercise to Fort Irwin, California, to the National Training Center. So we will be doing one of the largest rail movements that we've done in many, many years. And that will occur uh, between 14 and 23 May. And then again, when that equipment returns, 7 to 17 July. That will be 47 to 50 rail cars a day for that time period per day. Um, one train consisting of 47 to 49 rail cars will depart Camp Ripley uh, not later than 6 p.m. daily from 14 to 23 May. The empty cars will be staged then at Camp Ripley, so we'll bring the train in and train out uh, every evening by no later than 9 p.m. So as we pull a full train out, and that's all of our tanks, all of our heavy Bradley fighting vehicles, that's all of our heavy equipment that's supporting that unit. Now those rail cars will move in and out and then they'll be staged up in Staples. So you'll be seeing them along the, the Highway 10 corridor uh, as they move in and out the installation. Now that will directly affect the traffic on the Highway 115 bridge. And that bridge will be closed uh, each day from about six to nine. Um, and we'll, we have that all coordinated and we'll keep it open when the train's not actually sitting on the bridge, but you all are aware on the 115 bridge, that's a one-way bridge. Uh, in and off the installation and then our east gate onto the installation will be closed that entire time period and then again that will the reverse will happen in july when all of that equipment comes back uh, to camp ripley 
So our East Gate will be closed. It's going to be a, a it's quite a, an exercise for us logistically, moving all that equipment in and out. But it's a very important exercise for us in moving that uh, large heavy equipment with the current uh, <coughs> current environment we're in. Uh, so I, before I move on, I want to ask any anybody have any questions on that? And if you do, uh, please please let me know or, or get a hold of us, and, and we'll work our best with. We're coordinated with the State Patrol with Morrison County, so I think we have everything where we need it to be. Um, and it, it'll be quite an interesting exercise to watch as we move those uh, uh, units on and off. These are the units that will be trained, very small. Again, uh, uh, civilian numbers obviously go down in the summertime. Next slide, please. June will be a, a fairly uh, busy month for us. A lot of small units, but I'll point out uh, the 43rd Norwegian Exchange uh, it will be 16 to 30 June this year. So I'll be receiving 115 Norwegians uh, at Camp Ripley for two weeks. Uh, we'll be doing uh, inter-agency inter uh, training with our law enforcement agencies. Uh, so I know Morrison County and, and Low Falls and St. Paul and, and Hennepin County SWAT will all be participating along with our integrated. For the first time ever, we're going to integrate our Minnesota National Guard soldiers and the Norwegian soldiers and the civilian law enforcement together to, to do some operations together. And it's been very advantageous for us and, and created quite a, uh, quite a training event. So. Uh, Training in the every third or fourth year in the summer uh, creates a new capability for us. And then we will turn around six months from now and do another exchange in February of 17. So it'll be a very quick turnaround with our Norwegian exchange uh, over the next cycle. You see some, uh, some units out of Alt State uh, that will be coming in. There's some more artillery. Uh, these engineers will be, drift, will be bridging the Mississippi uh, again during this time period in June. So uh, as you're moving up and down, we obviously stay in very close contact with the Corps of Engineers and up and down the river corridor. Next slide. July, very easy month for us, but this unit right here I'd highlight, 21335 Infantry Battalion out of Mankato. They are in a deployment cycle right now. They are deploying uh, to the Sinai. Uh, and they'll be leaving in late July, so they'll be finishing up their deployment readiness exercises at Camp Ripley prior to their departure um, in, in July. So as you can see, we're still uh, in, the, in the rotation overseas and back uh, with the current situations around the world. Another artillery unit comes in. They were the ones that were shooting last weekend. Uh, and, then just, and this maintenance company is actually coming in to support all that equipment coming back, along with the 400 plus mechanics we have at Camp Ripley. So all of that equipment, when it comes back from Fort Irwin, uh, will probably be pretty broke, pretty used. So uh, they'll get that all back in our stocks. Next slide. August is, uh, again, we'll, we'll work it out. We have the Marines coming in in August. Uh, they, they normally come that time of year. Uh, some aviation elements. Uh, Army Reserve uh, companies will be in. And then uh, some more air defense artillery out of South Dakota. Very light, not a lot of not a lot of noise activity here. So this should be a fairly uh, light month for us, noise-wise. Next slide. September we get into our fall cycle and we're back into our civilian agency training. Uh, we have normally fall training. Obviously, the Morrison County Water Festival schools back. We get a lot of school traffic that time of year. Uh, state patrols run through their certifications and DNR and then our snowplow training. MnDOT is becoming more and more prevalent on the installation. I think a lot of people are noticing that. A lot of the regional meetings are being held now at Camp Ripley and, and I, I believe MnDOT will be a larger function uh, on Camp Ripley as the, as the years progress. Next slide. October, uh, we get into my favorite time of year. Obviously that's when we do all of our uh, our disabled veteran hunts and we do our outdoor activities uh, with those. Have the Minnesota Fire Marshals coming in for their fall training. And then a very special event for us obviously is our Court of Honor uh, that we have every fall uh, honoring our, our soldiers uh, of great service to the Minnesota Guard. Next slide. A couple of the new facilities we have on board that we're currently working with, the medical uh, simulation training center. If you've not seen this, I would encourage you to come out and see the medical simulation training center. This thing was built for the specific, pur specific purpose of the 10 minutes of life saving that happens in a catastrophic accident or incident. Okay, so for our soldiers, as I tell people all the time, our medics have to be trained for a catastrophic incident always. And this, this facility does that. Now something that's really exciting about this facility is that we weren't sure we'd be able to offer the training uh, capabilities that it have, which means the live breathing mannequins, the, the amputee, the, the kinds of trauma that, that EMTs need to have and that law enforcement 
people need to have, uh, but we are able to offer that to local levels of law enforcement and EMTs, and we'll be uh, working with that. And we had to get that cleared, and we did. So I'm very excited to know that we can use this also for our state uh, and local partners uh, for their training as well. And it's, it's an amazing facility. It's absolutely amazing. It, it's immersion training. It actually immerse, immerses you into the situation. And these, uh, these mannequins are very, very lifelike, very lifelike. So if you get a chance, I encourage you to come out and see how that, that facility works. Next slide. Our education center, uh, by now most of you have been out there, it's, it's working beautifully. It's absolutely working beautifully. We have a lot of classes going through there, both civilian and military. Uh, we're, we're, the dining facility is, is doing fantastic. Uh, everything that we expected from this facility is, is coming to fruition and it's opened up a lot of additional <coughs> training opportunities for us out at Camp Ripley. So uh, we're very, very proud of this facility and what it can do and what it's brought uh, to Camp Ripley's capabilities. Next slide. Our partners are always busy at Camp Ripley. Uh, the DNR, uh, they are currently finishing up a cycle of conservation officers with graduation as well as doing their uh, spring in-service. The State Patrol graduates here, their Academy graduates, and uh, they will start their spring in-service here very shortly. Uh, HSEM, HS the Homeland Security Emergency Management, has quite a, uh, a, a spring coming up with exercises and a couple large exercises scheduled for this fall, emergency related. Uh, and then MnDOT with their annual training events. And you've probably been aware, both here and at the facility that I manage in the Northern Metro in Arden Hills, we've been doing a lot of active shooter, shooter exercises. Uh, with law enforcement enforcement agencies and obviously i think you're all aware that we're going through some force protection changes at camp ripley which includes arming our security force so we are currently in the process of that training and certification uh, and we will be uh, arming our security force which we have not done in the past uh, due to the circumstances that occurred in tennessee last year and the uh, higher active uh, role around military installation towards military people so that will be occurring as well and is ongoing right now. Next Our environmental programs are very strong. Uh, our cultural natural resource programs are, are doing very, very well. Um, I will highlight, obviously, the green en energy things. We have broke ground on the solar field. Uh, that is ongoing. Uh, they're all building that. All of the new poles are put in already in the substations. Um, we are working right now uh, on our solar thermal. Our geothermal is doing very well. We brought two very large facilities on geothermal, both horizontal fields, uh, which are our first horizontal fields -ish that we've had. We've always had verticals, but we haven't had horizontals, and they're, they're uh, producing very well. We're currently working on a microgrid distribution system, uh, working towards that, and obviously our requirements of a 20% energy reduction by 2020 is what our overall goal is for the installation. And uh, my, my partner in the Construction Facilities Management Office it is well ahead of that curve uh, under General Mash's guidance to ensure that we do that. Next slide. Our environmental partnerships are very strong and continue to be strong. We have probably the largest group of interns, uh, college interns, that we've had in many years because we have the opportunity with a, with a little uh, more flat curve on our training cycle to get more interns out there working on the environment and doing some science work out there. So the Department of Natural Resources and Board of Water and Soil, Minnesota State College and Universities, I have a lot of, of summer interns coming from uh, CLC, uh, from their wildlife department, from St. Cloud State, uh, from the University of Minnesota, and I have some folks coming in from the University of Michigan uh, to work on uh, the long, the northern long-eared bat. Uh, as, as you're aware, that's another uh, little critter out there that we're working on right now and, and working with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as we determine what its effect is uh, on, the, on the environment. So the Nature Conservancy, the local school districts, all still very much involved uh, out at Camp Ripley. Next slide. These are some of the surveys I'm going. I can tell you that our, that our Golden Eagle Ripley, she has left the installation now. She's up in northern Canada. Um, headed back up to her to her summer nesting grounds. Uh, she did come back last winter, so she. Had